We are born learners. We crave new challenges and new adventures. Our creativity is limitless. And when we learn through play, amazing, often unexpected things happen. In schools and in homes around the world, students are using Minecraft to build cities, explore coral reefs, to create with code, run science experiments, and to tell fantastic stories. Minecraft has always been about exploration and discovery, bringing together a global community of co-creators. Now, the next generation of engineers, biologists, and designers are inspiring us with their creations. Minecraft Education Edition empowers learners to solve problems they care about, to connect in new ways far beyond the classroom, and to build a better world through the power of play. Minecraft is changing the way people learn already. It's already having a major effect. I've described it this weekend as an, as an awakening. I was truly learning with and from my students. These teachers see the excitement with the students, the level of engagement. I think it makes them realize this is what I got into teaching for. If the kids are so incredibly passionate about this game, there's obviously value in it to them. It's not that it helps kids learn different. They've been learning that way. They've been learning through gaming. It helps us see the way that they learn different. And I think that is the biggest game changer. Minecraft is the one tool I found where the collaboration is, is incredible. There is a lot of potential um, where we have um, students and teachers can come into the same space and interact together. Hey, wait, is this, is this part right here, this part right here? When we give them the license and just give them the challenge, we want you to do project X, Y, or Z. Teach us what you know about biomes. Show us a sustainable build. Show us what you know about volume. Um, they're very comfortable in that environment and um, it's really powerful to watch that happen. I've never seen a more empowering tool for kids to use to create. The students have a lot of ownership. Um, they have a lot of autonomy, a lot of agency in that space. You talk about the same experiences that computer programming gives, where you're allowed to fail and you're allowed to do things. Minecraft provides that same experience. My favorite line is build a house and the magic happens when you do that. To walk into the world that a child has created and to see their excitement, to watch their eyes light up. It is something that you honestly have to experience at least once in your life. They are able to connect what they're doing, their actions in, in this seemingly play game environment, but they begin to make connections to their learning. And when they're doing that, and you're only bounded by your imagination, the sky's really the limit. It's so often, I guess, these times in education when we feel like we can't take a leap and do something that isn't planned, that isn't tested, that isn't something that fits into the confines of a textbook. But when you look at kids loving learning and learning that we didn't define, nothing speaks louder than that. My feeling is let's tap into the way kids learn. You know, let's embrace that and let's bring that into the classroom. And when we can do that, we've really, you know, made something happen. The dynamic of the classroom has really changed. It's refreshing to see that that, you know, kids want to be creative. Kids want to um, have this just clean, open slate to do whatever they can or, or want, or, you know, or dream. That doesn't happen in classrooms normally. Uh, but I think more and more, Minecraft is going to be able to help people figure out a collaborative digital future that they would have never imagined otherwise. My name is Rochelle, and in this series, we are going to talk about the Minecraft Education Edition eSports, which is happening this coming March. But before that, let's talk about what eSports is. So when we hear the word eSports, basically the first thing that comes our mind are usually online games such as Fortnite, League of Legends, Defense of the Ancients, and so on. But did you know that eSports is not just a usual online games that our kids play almost every day. Now let's talk about what esports is. Well, many of the definitions relate to competitive, organized, or professional play, 
few give consideration to one of the most important dimensions of esports the community of spectators who watch live tournaments in arenas or who live streams competition from all over the world. This community aspects of esports is a vibrant, interactive, and participative space which is driving the growth of esports as an industry, as entertainment, and even as a, a route to a college education and a potential career pathway. So what do esports look like in practice? In addition to the professional player who are uh, or who competes against each other, a fundamental component of esports culture is the huge number of spectators who attend tournaments in person, who access the competitions by streaming them online through platforms such as Mixer, Twitch, and YouTube, etc. Um, in 2018, the League of Legends Esports World Championship had audience viewing figures comparable with the 2008 Super Bowl. Imagine that. It is pro uh, projected by 2021 or 2021, esports audience will reach 300 million worldwide in the United States, and it will have more viewers than all uh, other professional sports league, except perhaps NFL as shown in the figure. As such, esports has now become a global industry estimated to grow to 1.5 billion by 2020 by international competitions, generous monetary prices, and the potential of sponsorship. Um, as well as being viewed as a valid career pathway with opportunities for university scholarship and a range of career options within the growing esports entertainment in industry itself. Now, where did it all begin? Since then, online gaming has become an integral and accepted part of everyday culture in Korea with esports athletes um, are often given celebrity status. Esports is now embedded within mainstream culture across much of Asia with organized leagues of games such as StarCraft and Lineage. Typically broadcast on primetime television in much the same way traditional sports matches in other countries. The growth of esports in the US and Europe is now beginning to excel, with competitive gaming becoming a mainstream activity, attracting millions of spectators to regional and international events organized by large professional organizations like the World Cyber Game or WCG. Electronic Sports World Cup or ESWC, and Cyber Athlete Professional League or CTL. Now, where is esports going? In turn, educators in high schools are considering whether there is a place for esports in schools, either as part of college preparatory classes, or whether there may uh, be other educational benefits from this growing field. Much of the discussion be, uh, about esports legitimacy as a leisure and entertainment activity, and even as a school subject, revolve around disagreements about whether it should actually be considered a sport, since traditional sports have a well respected place as part of cultural activities such as Olympics. Is esport a game or a sport? No, what is sport? According to the Entertainment Software Association in 2017, video games have become one of the most popular recreational activities with as many adults as children playing for the entertainment. This growth uh, in video game popularity has seen esports become an accepted form of sport entertainment across the world. Yet, there is strong debate in sports industry about its legitimacy as a sport. And coincidentally, some questions from educators about where it might fit in school curricula. There are differing options on what exactly constitutes a sport. Research exploring the connection between esports and sport present a set of criteria outlining what constitutes a sport based on a review of work undertaken by a number of different researches. And the five criteria I identified are. Physical activity, recreation, competitive elements, 
organizational structure, and social acceptance of sports, for example, by the media or sports agencies. In addition to this, and in accordance with the criteria set out by Hallman and Gale in 2018, esports also have media and sponsorship support with large audiences streaming competitions throughout platforms such as Mixer, Twix, and YouTube. With esports developing a professional structure for esports similar to, to traditional sports, including tournaments, leagues, fans, teams, team owner, player contracts, and sponsors, an emerging price and pay structure, scholars argue that there are undoubted parallel between, between traditional sports competitions and esports. From an educational point of view, considering esports only from the perspective of sports may be too narrow in terms of its inherent value as a tool for teaching and learning. Educators may be interested in, explore, in exploration of esports that consider the underlying role of play in all games. Now, is esports a legitimate sport? It would seem that to some degree, esports may be battling the same image problems that video games have with gaming culture being characterized as isolating, antisocial, and a lazy pastime as the mass media. Whether esports gain worldwide recognition as a sport may determine the extent to which it becomes accepted as a legitimate activity for players or indeed students to participate in. However, the question of whether esports is a legitimate classroom activity with solid educational functions or foundations is a different matter explored in depth in section. Number three, esports culture. The esports revolution. There are a number of different games that are used to practice and play esports. In 2019, the most popular titles were Fortnite, Defense of the Ancient 2, and Counter Strikes, with between 200 and almost 700 tournaments hosted for these games. However, there are also different types of games or types of games, and this is particularly interesting from an educational perspective because different types of games um, elicit different forms of gameplay and requires player to develop different skill set. Additionally, it is important to understand the differences between these games because some will be more appropriate for a school esport team than others. Now, who is involved in esports? While players and teams are found at the very center of this ecosystem, the authors argue that it is actually the wider community, their practices, engagement, and even their products are created and drive the entire esports engine. The researchers go on to make the case that make knowledge and skills learned as part of esports curriculum connected with STEM college preparatory skills, and career, career technical education standards in U.S. schools. In addition to the players and community they mentioned, the ecosystem also contains professional and commercial components, including publishers, business managers, marketing experts, physical therapists, and professional representing brands and platforms. In esports, we all need the strategies, the organizers, the content creator, the entrepreneurs. And um, as this industry continues to grow, it is this professional aspect that is becoming increasingly recognized, attracting investors, media attentions, and with it reaching audiences that may be considered mainstreams by the public. Types of games. There are a number of different games that are used to practice and play esports, such as Fortnite, Dota 2, Counter Strike, um, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Overwatch, League of Legends, Call of Duty, um, and many more. However, as the esports industry continues to explode, the emergence of new titles sees games that blends in action with strategy and role-playing, 
making it increasingly difficult for educators to clarify these games by type alone. For example, League of Legends, which is um, typified as a real-time strategy game, player assume the role of a character or an, or an avatar with unique strength and abilities. Here are some of the strategy in the game occurs when teams have to coordinate different characters, strengthen as part of their plan, merging the strategy and role-playing generous. For simplicity, in the section below, we reviewed the characteristics of each of the four main types of video games. Player versus player, also known as PvP, are games where one player competes against another or several or other. A distinction is made here that is kind of face off between one or more human players as opposed to a human player battling against the computer. In days gone by, you may have extended to see this kind of action on a console game much as Mario Kart, where one player races against another around a racetrack, or in Street Fighter, when one player participate in open combat again another or against another opponent. However, the generous moved with the times and PvP is found in both fighting games and sports games. Real-time strategy or RTS. In a real-time strategy game, players do not take turns to play. Instead, play occurs continuously as players compete against each other to achieve the game's objective. In RTS games, generally, each player is positioned on a map with limited resources and the objective is to strategize the best way to secure their resources, build their forces, and defend their territory. As players begin to use up the world's resources, the game requires them to take over their opponent's base to secure enough resources for their own growing empire. Resource gathering is a main feature here, but so is resources use, and player must think tactically to overcome their opponents and win the game. Multiplayer Online Battle Arena, or MOBA. In recent years, interest in RTS games has won, partly because for spectators, these games are not as fast-paced as other types of games. The multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA genre, is offering both players and spectators the tactical challenges of RTS, but with the pace of excitement of an action video game. In MOBA, individual players must work as a team to gather resources and successfully destroy the opposing team's base or structure. Typically, a player will assume the identify of an avatar or character with specific abilities in-game, and therefore a huge part of tactically plays in this kind of game depends on the team deciding when, where, and how to use the different player's strength to help their quest. First-person shooter or FPS. In a first-person shooter, the player views the world through the eyes of their character. In this sense often the player won't see their character's body but they can usually see objects they are carrying such as weapons maps etc and an indicator of their status in the form of health points lives armor communication and etc this status enables the player to make strategies decision in decision in game about which action to take or which avenues to pursue in meeting the overall objectives of the game. As the name suggested FPS, these games are typically set in battlefields or battle arenas with the objective of killing the other team. Now, which of these titles might be applicable in the classroom? Consideration of game ratings, researching and games before purchasing them is an essential first step for educators. This combined with the thorough consideration of your curriculum learning objectives and your school's ethos and values will set a clear benchmark for games that are suitable for your educational setting. Types of player. Some of esports' finest player 
have reached celebrity status in the game, gaming community and beyond, often known first and foremost by their game tag. These professional level players are generally, but not always, skilled at playing one particular type of game and are often scouted by the top teams. For example, Lee Sang Yuk, aka Faker, is said to be the world's finest League of Legends player, having won the World Championship three times. Beginning his career at the age of 17, he is believed to have won more than over 1.2 million dollars in prize money and has a place on the korean national team this story is not usual in esports and as the industry begins to establish itself firmly with sponsorship and media supports schools colleges and the wider esports industry are seeing valid career pathways emerge who are esports player a lot of research has been conducted on the players themselves. It is important for a game designer to understand what makes a player want to play. And form or, or from this single consideration has come the realization that not all players are alike. Early research on the theory of games suggested that this want was tied to a player's strategic consideration of cost benefit or how can I maximize my minimal playoff while minimizing the maximal playoff of the other players. The data gathered was based on a specific game genre, MMORGPG, and while this year or this early game theory was groundbreaking, it failed to take into action what is known as a fuzzy human dimension that arises from understanding how game influence emotion and cognition, particularly factors such as motivation, satisfaction, and pleasure. Number four, esports as organized play. Leagues and tournament. Over the past decade, the number of esports leagues and tournaments has grown exponentially, reflecting its growing acceptance in mainstream culture. This growth in esports events has been supported by the establishment of professional esports bodies, such as the International Esports Federation in South Korea, representing over 50 member nations, including the United States, Sweden, China, Russia, and Germany. In 2017, almost 4,000 esports tournaments took, or took place, with total prize money reaching. 110.6 million dollars this figure presents information on professional tournaments that took place in 2019 not listed here but the particular significance is the world cyber games comparable to the olympic games in that it attracts competitors from over 70 countries and more than a million participants for entry into the national prelimin pre preliminary grounds who organize esports events? International events such as the World Cyber Game or WCG attract such huge numbers of participants and spectators that corporate sponsorship media naturally fo follows, generating even larger audience and larger prices, helping to further embed esports as an increasingly accepted culture activity. It is this foundation as a cultural activity, supported by mainstream media and sponsored by global brands that has laid the groundwork for the establishment of the institutionalized governance of esports, giving um, raise to an increase in numbers of professional leagues, as well as the number of regulatory organizations representing esports throughout the world, including the cyber athlete professional, or athlete or um, the cyber athlete professional leagues in the US, Korean Esports Association in South Korea, and the Electronic Sports League in Europe. Governance of esports. At the time of writing, there is no single international governing body for esports. Currently, each esports is individually governed by a game publisher, for example, League of Legends by Riot Games. Rocket Lead by Psychonix, 
because of the past or the fast-paced growth of the industry and also because the participants are most or are most likely to be young adolescents from around the world there is a great need of international regulation rule setting ethical guidance and governance a global sports organization for all while these organizations give some regulatory structure to the sports industry some criticize the lack of independence and objectivity created by having publishers and other insider in positions of authority with a sense of this organization's may make decisions best suited for their business rather than for the profession, player, or the industry at large. Furthermore, none of these organizations have yet established any real enforcement mechanism necessary to enforce rule and regulations in the esports industry. Recommendations for Global Governing Body to unify governance and regulation of esports across all games and publisher with independent rule setting, met, uh, metrics, and reporting. Currently, here are the organizations who support esports events. First is the International Esports Federation. Founded in 2008, the International Esports Federation aims to promote standardization in esports, to provide esports oriented human resource training, and to continually promote esports and its values. Next is the World Esports Association or WESA. The World Esports Association was founded in 2016 by ESL, the world's largest esports company, and eight multi gaming organizations. And lastly, the National and Regional Esports Federation. A number of esports organizations exist at the national and regional scales. At the regional scales, organizations like the Asian Electronic Sports Federation, or AESF, are governing body of 45 members or member countries, including South Korea, China, and Singapore. At a national level, Organizations like the United States Esports Federation and other are the official governing body for professional esports in the USA and, and are member of international esports body, such as International Esports Federation. Now, those are the facts about esports, and we'll be talking about esports as a game-based learning next. Thank you for your time, and have a great day. Over the past few months, We've seen wildlife roam through cities while humans stayed inside. Without cruise ships and ferries around, dolphins visited the port of Cagliari in Sardinia, Italy, and wild boar roamed the streets of Barcelona. But what if animals could share space with humans all the time? Today, we're kicking off the first ever Minecraft Education Global Build Championship and asking students around the world to design and build healthy spaces for humans and animals to coexist together. What will you build? Hey, I'm Ayana. I'm a developer on the Minecraft team. If I were to participate in the Global Build Challenge, I'd build a series of underwater tubes so we could transport things without disturbing the aquatic life. Hello everyone, I'm OMG Chad. And if I were to design a build for the Global Championship, I would make a house with a habitat for my cats on top. And I would call it a habitat. Hey, hello, hello, Carbon. I would like to build a Japanese construction. Hello, we are the brothers Leo. And if we were to participate in the dynamic of Minecraft, we would build houses with a vacuum tube so that the animals don't be scared. Participate! Design and build your own solution in Minecraft Education Edition. For the chance to win mine coins, awesome Minecraft gear, and a video chat with Mojang Studios. The championship opens today.